Okay, I've been having a bit of trouble with the Zortrax extruder skipping like mid print and just uh, shredding the, the, the filament. It's actually not, it's not really skipping, it's, um, it's stripping the filament and then it stops feeding. And it looks like my um, nozzle looks clear. I've taken it out, I've cleaned it out, I've heat gunned it. Um, it's printing, I mean, it's extruding pretty well, just like right now, like we're, I have the, just loading the filament and extruding. It seems straight. If you see, if you see it come out of the nozzle, like, and curve upwards and kind of come off to the side, that's usually, that's usually an indication that it is, uh, has, has some obstruction in the hole. So in this case, I don't see any indication of that. Uh, I saw it earlier on, but still, like, even, even with this cleared out nozzle, it'll print for a while and then the part will fail. The parts were failing, it would just, I would come back, come and check on it and it would just be like above and hadn't printed anything. So, um, I, trying to figure out what's going on and I think that, and this has been an issue, this has been an issue in the past, is this gets really hot. Uh, the front of the, the front of the extruder plate, where the stepper motor attaches to it gets super hot mainly I think from this heat from the stepper motor there's heat rising from the extruder down below also but uh, this gets so hot that I can barely touch it and I think that makes it easy to strip the filament because the gear is probably the gear is probably hot in there too and so strips out the filament I also use this insulated cover to keep the heat in and improve the print quality and it makes a huge difference however since it retains the heat so well it doesn't allow the motor and extruder to cool down enough and it exacerbates the stripping issue. Two things that could be done here. One is to put like a heat sink on the front and since a while back I switched out to this Micro Swiss all metal hot end and it solved a lot of problems I had printing with like PETG and nylons and stuff and it's been really good. Also like the Z Ultrat filament, that's my favorite filament to print with. So I don't print a lot with this ABS, I just just now started printing with the ABS. And um, I also switched out these fans to some um, higher quality fans because the fans had gone bad and actually were making a lot of noise and one of them, this one wasn't even working at all. So the Z Ultrat is what I usually print with, the Z ABS I don't print with a whole lot. So now that I've been, I wanted to try to print with some Z ABS, um, the motor is stripping the filament. So I think it's, a com I think it's probably due to heat buildup. Um, it, seems to be, it seems to be happening like mid print when it's, after it's gotten really hot. When I switch over to the Micro Swiss hot end, it also replaced the heat sink. So I have this extra heat sink sitting here that I could potentially use to attach onto the front here by removing one of these screws that's attaching the motor to the front and passing the screw through the heat sink. So I may need to get a longer screw. Um, let's see. If I do it this way, or I need to cut out cut out a thin area or something to reach down in there and uh, make some space for the screw head to come through. So I could mount this heatsink here. I could also add a fan to the heatsink, add an extra fan, and just tap it into the wires that are already going down to the fan down below and um, there's this fan down below for the for the extruder so could try to cool it actively with a fan there if the passive cooling is not enough I could also add another heat sink to the back of the motor to try to sink out the heat there because this gets this gets actually very hot so a heat sink on both ends would be good. Like a heat sink back here would be good because it would draw the heat. If you could cool this back here, it would draw the heat kind of out the, out the back too and, and keep, it from, keep the heat from building up and going, coming over to the front. Okay, so I'm gonna remove this screw on this side and this is the, one of the screws that I'll attach it to. I'm actually gonna Go ahead and take out this screw too. Try to attach it to both sides, get a good contact on there. I need to measure the spacing between these screws here. 
The spacing between the screws is pretty close to 31.5 millimeters. I'm gonna make a mark on the back side here. That's, uh, looks like those, those screw holes are close, but they're a little bit wider. So I'm gonna make a mark on the back. That's um, a little bit closer to the height I want it, which is right about, right about here. The height I want to make those holes is just give it a little bit of clearance, about 13.5 millimeters. And then let's make a mark here. Cross it. Cross it. Double check that height. Looks good. Gives a little bit of clearance from the top. So now I need to drill the holes. Okay, so here I drilled the hole out on the back side to fit the screw and there's plenty of, plenty of room there. I wanted to be uh, spacious so it wouldn't be too tight, uh, tight fit. And then on the front side, I drilled out enough space for the head of the screw. So um, the screw fits down in there. And I even countersunk it a little bit into the base so I'd have the maximum length of the screw to fit into the motor. <clears throat> we'll see how this fits on here. Hopefully there's enough screw length Looks like we got some amount of threads. Yeah, it should be good enough. Holes aren't perfectly lined up, so I gotta loosen up one screw before screwing in the other. So I just want to be careful about not um, cross-threading the threads. I had to widen the holes a little bit so that the screws would fit better. And I also added four layers of aluminum foil on the back to hopefully bridge the gap a little bit better. And I even sanded, I even sanded down this uh, back of the heat sink to get better contact there because anodizing is actually a insulator. So... <clears throat> So you get better thermal conduction if you remove the anodizing. Here's the finished heatsink mod on the Zortrax. And you can still access the stepper drive under there. So you can still get to there if you need to to clean that out. And um, yeah, I mean, it's definitely getting warm. It's, it's sinking some heat. And the back of the motor still is quite warm and could use a heat sink back here too. There's a little bit more clearance back here between here and the back where it touches um, or, or where it doesn't touch, you know, the, the, the space there, like in the front, the extruder goes all the way up against the front, but in the back is a little bit of a gap. So I could actually attach a plate to the back of the whole motor that comes up and then has heat sink fins up here, a little higher up to heat sink the motor better and keep the heat from coming up the shaft into the stepper gear here because really it's the gear that's getting hot and stripping the material. So, um, well, I hope that this works a little bit better. Okay, so this is the first time after many attempts that the printing did not stop that the extruder did not strip the filament and is still going with the addition of the heat sink because before I added the heat sink every time I tried to print this it would halfway or part of the way through the print somewhere the filament would strip the drive gear would strip the filament and it would stop printing and jam um, I mean it wasn't really jammed because I could start I could load the filament and it would load fine and extrude fine I could just push it manually push it manually down through here but it was uh, it was just stripping and I can feel that this uh, heat sink is hot and it's doing doing its job of removing some heat it's definitely pretty hot down here and uh, so it's sinking some of the heat off the off the surface and touch the face when it's not so close to the front but uh, this is a lot cooler than it was before before I could barely I could barely touch this 
if I, it was, it was almost too hot to touch when it was running. And now it's much cooler. I mean, it's still, still plenty warm, but, um, almost got me there, almost bit me. Still plenty warm, but it's a lot, it's a lot cooler than it was before. Um, so it's doing, it's cooling this off. Now, I wonder when I go to put my cover back on, if it's going to get too hot in there. This is with my cover. If it's going to get too hot inside with the door closed and everything all closed up. And, um, still strip the filament but we'll have to see if that if that heat sink works with the uh, with the covers on um if it doesn't work with the covers on if it still strips the filament then i may have to add a fan here i'm thinking about cutting off this cutting off the lower portion where where it's um it's this is doesn't pass through the fins don't pass through the, to the edge just trimming that off so that the fins pass through and then put a fan on it with a 3d printed shroud that blows onto the the uh, the gear the extruder gear so it keeps the extruder gear cool and it cools off the heat sink faster too for now this is working great i hope that this gives you some ideas of how to solve your uh, filament stripping issues you have on the zortrax or maybe any you know other printers too most of the filament stripping issues are either caused by uh, clogs in the nozzle uh, that, that the filament can't extrude, like blockages in the pathway, or uh, heat creep, which is heat coming up and, and just building up until it melts the filament, it makes it softens the filament at the extruder gear and it just strips the filament and it won't drive anymore. And that's especially a problem with the Zortrax where there's no spring in the system there. It's just a fixed gear and a fixed bearing. And so if, it's, if it strips the filament, then there's no spring to, to take up that, that, that space and it just stays stripped. It can't, uh, it can't recover from that like uh, some of the other extruders can that have a, um, a uh, spring 